Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I have a great video for you guys. It's all about pastels. Everything you need to know about pastels, how, how to use them, what tools to use, how to blend them, how to apply them, just everything, everything you can think of. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Okay guys. I figured I'd make this video because there are a lot of questions going around about how to use pastels and there's a lot of beginners that you know want to use pastels but don't quite know how to use them or if they would enjoy using them. Some get confused about hard pastels and soft pastels and if you missed that video, I will link that one above where I talk about the different types of pastels and what's the difference between them. So you can make an informative decision which one is best for you. So you can watch, hop on over there and watch that video. But this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how I use them, what tools I use on them, just all of my tools. So it's just everything that you need to know. So let me stop rambling and jump on in to the video. Right, so <laughs> first and foremost, I'm going to show you what most people use for their pastels and spreading them. You are very familiar with the just ordinary regular cotton balls and some people use the cotton rounds. So a lot of people use the cotton products to spread their pastels with or to apply their pastels. And then there are the pom-poms that you can get. I think they actually come in the pan pastel set. They come in different sizes and a lot of people use these because these are a different material than the cotton balls and the cotton rounds. These are like a nylon type material, so they're different. They're an actual synthetic fiber instead of a natural uh, cotton material. So these, in my opinion, spread the pastels, I would say a little bit better than a cotton product because the cotton products tend to just absorb all of the, the pigment and the chalk. It's like it doesn't, by the time it spreads your your pastel on your page, half of the pastel is soaked up into the cotton or the cotton ball. So these don't quite do that. They move the pigment around the page and they don't quite grab all of the pigment up before it can get the page saturated. So these are some well-known things that people usually use for their pastels. The next thing people use for their pastels are these cosmetic wedges. And they are pretty much just like the cotton. They're like a mixture in between the cotton and the pom-pom. They don't quite soak it up as badly as a cotton round, but they still don't, you know. I'm not including these in my tools, recommended tools, you know, section or part of my toolbox, my coloring toolbox. So, ooh, that's a good video idea. I think I'm gonna make that next. Okay, anyway. <laughs> but like a lot of people use these and you know, this is a blender sponge. So this is kind of like your cosmetic wedge. And also a lot of people love using the cotton swabs or Q-tips. And they use those to get in smaller areas. You know, when you have those little tiny areas in between a leaf, you don't want to really go over the whole thing with the, with the pigment. You can use a little uh, cotton swab or Q-tip. And I got these, which are called cosmetic applicators, cotton tip. And one end actually has a flat head. You can see that. And the other end has a uh, arrow shaped pointy and so I love these very much they came from Dollar General I'm sure you can get them from anywhere but yeah the bag is all beat up because I've had them forever and I use them forever okay now I have just discovered the use of eyeshadow applicators this guys is life this is going to be a new staple in my pastel toolbox these apply the pastels so smoothly 
so beautifully. Oh my goodness, I just discovered these. I've been meaning to try these with my pastels, but I didn't. And I actually believe this particular one is different than the eyeshadow applicators you get in your little cheap eyeshadow kits. They have more of that sponge, like the the, the pores are like thicker or, or wider or bigger. These are more like the sponge that comes on the pan pastel tool. And I showed you in the previous video um, about the differences between hard pastels and soft pastels and pan pastels. I showed you how these applied to the page, how they applied the pastel to the page. And it was like ridiculously smooth and beautiful. So we are going to, you know, we, we're adding this to, to the <laughs> to the number ones. But guys, if you notice a theme here, and then we have these silicone makeup brushes that are actually amazing to use with your pastels, both hard and soft pastels. So if you notice a theme here, guys, do you notice it? Makeup tools are amazing to use in your a coloring experience. You know, I always love taking things that are not labeled for one usage and use it exactly the same as another item. Because if you were to buy, you know, something like, for example, the sponges or the like refill tips, or the applicators for the pan pastels, you would not be paying a dollar for 20 of those <laughs> applicators. Those little puppies are pretty expensive. So if you kind of find something that's out of the realm, if they name it for something particular and it's not just general, they're gonna charge through the roof for it. Like these pom-poms, they actually sell these as you know uh, soft pastel, tool kit or something, but they have the little bitty pom-poms in there. Oh no, not the um, pan pastels. It's the pebbles, the pebble chalk. They have these exact things, little tiny ones, like three of them in there. And if you try to go get refills, they're not a dollar for a bunch of them like these are. So, you know, you kind of have to, you know, it's, it's crafting. This is particularly crafting. And let me just go ahead and throw this in there with it. Oh my goodness, guys, you saw me rant and rave about these in my last video. This is life right here. I'm going to tell you, you know, which ones are my favorite, which ones I recommend the most. So uh, you have all of these, which are kind of like makeup and craft related. And here's another one that's craft related, these pastel pushers. Now they actually call these pastel pushers or something in um, like Hobby Lobby and places. And they're actually silicone pushers. And on Amazon, they were saying that they were for clay and clay making and all that kind of stuff. But these from Amazon have the dotting tools, all different sizes on the end of it. And guys, I love dotting tools to use, you know, with not only my uh, nail art, but they make the best thing to like put white accents with your white acrylic paint on your coloring pages. So this was kind of like a double duty here. So that's pretty much the tools you can use that's in a different area, but perfect for using with your pastels. Now, I am going to tell you which ones are my favorite and which ones I will be implementing a whole lot in my pastel usage. I used to use the cotton swabs, not cotton swabs. I'm pointing at the cotton balls and I'm looking at the cotton swabs, but the cotton balls used to be an essential, but they're not anymore because they soak up too much. Then I went to the pom-poms. They were like, oh my goodness, they're amazing. Then I was like, mm -mm. but when I found this, this is my number one guys oh my goodness this you saw the you saw the video okay let me stop talking about it this is my number one use one my number one tool for pastel usage these are now my new number two the eyeshadow applicators by sassy and chic this particular one because if you can't 
can you see the yeah you can see the actual texture of these um, eyeshadow applicators so this is my number two and my number three is actually these silicone makeup brushes they're something like this but they're a little more textured because they're makeup brushes and they have all different sizes in there. I absolutely love that pointy one right there. I've been using it uh, to like get into small areas that you know I don't wanna you know cover my whole page with. So these are my number three and this is my number four. These are my, my absolute necessary tools for using with my soft pastels and my hard pastels. And I told you in my last video when I was telling you about the pastels that I'm not going to just, you know, abandon the pom-poms and the cotton balls, but especially the pom-poms because they're my next in line. When I want a very soft, not too pigmented color or um, like background or something, I will use the pom-poms to spread my pastel around. So they're my next pick. And then, of course... I will use, you know, if I want that same soft background, I will use, you know, the cotton swabs, but I really, really don't have to because I have these now and they can get into the small areas. So eh, I'll probably just use them up, but I wouldn't buy any more for my pastel usage. So those are my number ones <laughs> with plural picks these now i plan on using these with my um distressed inks so maybe they'll work better for that but the cotton stuff uh -uh, nah i don't think i will be using that as much as i was and your next blending item will be, of course, uh, some tortillions and some paper stumps. These are, I guess since they're made of cotton, actually, they soak up the color too. So these will be kind of in the league, the same league as the uh, Q-tips. I probably wouldn't use these paper stumps as much to, you know, do my pest ways and stuff everywhere this is ridiculous i probably wouldn't use either of these to move my pastels around because they just they just soak up the pigment and i'm not i'm not happy with that so that's out and speaking of paper stumps you can get this little sandpaper um tool here a lot of people were asking you know what is that thing well this is actually used to either sharpen your paper stumps or it's used to sharpen your pastels or your pastel pencils and it's also used to clean your paper stumps because if you you know move some pastel around or blend your pastels or your color pencils or whatever it is you don't want to use that with that color on there again and get that color transferred so you will need this um sandpaper block to you know sharpen your pastels and clean your paper stumps off and this is also very good to use with your pastel pencils you never want to put your pastel pencils in a pencil sharpener because it really really wastes the pigment that's in that pastel pencil so you can just run it over this for a few times and kind of get the point that you need but yes Next, very important, you're going to need something to scrape your pastels off with. And some people use an X-Acto knife, but I wouldn't use an X-Acto knife because that's kind of dangerous and you know I'm clumsy. So I just use a little, you know, fruit cutting knife that came with this cutting board. And I really like this cutting board because if you would like to just scrape the pastel off here, which I never do, and you don't wanna put it directly to your page, you wanna kinda of pick it up and then put it over, then you can always use this to, you know, you can also use this for like pastel pencils or watercolors, it's really nice. But this is what I use to scrape my pastels off 
to scrape the pigment off onto the page. I use this type of knife and not an exacto knife because those things are super sharp. The next thing you're going to need is something to store your old cotton balls and pom-poms and things in because you just don't want to leave them sitting out and they have pigment on them. That can get everywhere. You're talking about a messy desk. Leave these on your desk and just let them sit around and, and see what happens to your desk. It becomes a colorful mess. <laughs> and let's see. The next thing that's super, 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 super important is to our tools to hold your pastels and also to um, apply your pastels with maybe a cotton ball or a pom-pom. These work double duty. Well, at least this one does. But this is a diamond or gem grabber, a diamond grabber. And you see those little, like, claws that come out that can grab you can put your pom-pom on the end of it and it'll grab it and then you can just move it around you know just like that and this one oh my goodness i love this to death this is just a mini a small tong some small tongs with plastic on the end these are amazing in holding your little pom-pom balls or your um cotton balls i like this better than this because this is like super little and it makes my hand hurt but this i can just just kind of just do it any kind of way and it's just it feels better in my hand and they also have what's called a uh, jewelry helper which I don't have, but it is the same thing that comes in the uh, pebble chalk kit. So that's a that's a pretty good, you know, one too, I guess. I don't have one, but it looks like it's easy to use. But let me show you the other thing that you can do with these tongs. Now, you know, I'm a diva and I do not like getting dirty. <laughs> and I was using these pastels in the other video. Look, I'm getting ready to do this now. And I was getting so filthy and, and dirty and pastel-y and colorful on my hands. And I was like, no, this is not gonna work. I'm just gonna have to figure out something else. So I went put on a rubber glove, but that wasn't comfortable. But let me, let me get back to what I'm talking about and stop getting off on a tangent. You can use this to pick pick up your pastels. Okay, now I can't do it. I was doing it just fine <laughs> before the video, but now it wants to show out and act a fool. But anyway, oh! <laughs> see that blooper? Take two. <laughs> okay, you can pick it up. Let me do this right, it's getting late. And this is where you can scrape it off onto your paper. You can just hold it like that and then scrape it on your paper. Whew, I tell you, my life. And guys, you might notice my hands shake or I drop stuff all the time. <sighs> not only am I clumsy, but my illnesses does not help with that situation. <laughs> so here you can grab the pastel out of here and kind of get your best grip on it. And then you can just, you can just scrape, 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 scrape. And not get your hands dirty. Because using pastels, oh, it's a dirty job. You have dust flying everywhere. You have colors and chalk flying everywhere. It's just, it's, it can get messy, but that's, kind of alleviates some of the mess. So those are those tools. Next in line are pretty much the same, in the same line as keeping things clean and, and, and un, 
marked you don't want you don't want to put pastel on one area and then you know some pastel from another area comes over there and all that kind of stuff so these are the brushes well these aren't the brushes these are the no-no brushes you want something that's you know soft and plush like these makeup brushes to dust your pastel uh, crumbs so to speak <laughs> your pastel dust you want to use something very soft like a soft brush to brush your page off if you want to you know clean that those pastels off that were straggling and wouldn't go into the tooth of the paper but never use a bristle see I almost dropped something in I got ugh. I need some new hands uh, these bristle brushes like these you saw me using this one on the last video but I realized that wasn't good to use because not only did it let's see how can I put this not only did it not clear the paper clear the dust off the paper like I wanted it to it also like made more dust if that makes sense it it didn't control the pastel dust it just made it fly everywhere especially towards me and if you have sinus issues and allergy issues you do not want that dust flying anywhere near you so this brush kind of soaked it up and picked it up you know just like it will do makeup it'll soak that makeup or that dust in and then you you know you just wash it after a few uses or you know after it starts looking like this <laughs> So don't use something with bristles on it. Use something soft. So that's my next tool. That's super, super important. Next, guys, are the erasers. Now, I know you're saying, okay, pastels. What am I going to be erasing in using pastels? Well, a lot of times you may either apply the wrong color of a pastel or you want to make, you know, circles or bubbles or you want to make some lines like some sunlight rays or something. Erasers are perfect for achieving that look. Or if you want to, you know, you, you smeared the pastel somewhere where it shouldn't be. Pastels are very, very easy to erase, at least the soft pastels are so you know those make these make great additions to your pastel coloring toolbox and these are needed erasers that you can kind of use to just pick up the color like if you maybe put down too much color and you want it to be kind of light you can you want it you want it to be a little bit lighter you can just use a kneaded eraser and just dap over top of the color and it'll it'll pull up some of that um, pastel off your page so erasers are next in line very important in your pastel toolbox the next thing that's super important I know you're looking like really Nisi really some paper towels and some baby wipes trust me you need them <laughs> now the paper towels you know why you need those the baby wipes you can actually use baby wipes as a tool you know you can actually use it to spread the pastels around especially oil pastels and that's for another video gotta show you guys my new oil aquarelle water soluble pastels they are amazing guys but anyway not only are these used to clean because dust is going to be everywhere and pastel shavings are going to be everywhere you can use these for a tool also and the next thing that's super 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 important you know I'm a color chart girl and I have to have color charts of everything because I need to know what color is going to go down before I put them down on the page because I already have an envision of how I want that page to look. Now, let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do a detailed video on what's going on in my head as I color, the my coloring process, like 
from start to finish. When I pick a coloring page, you know, what do I do to pick my colors and how do I go about coloring it and what items I color first? Just let me know in the comments if you want to see something like that. But the first thing I do when I'm coloring anything, whatever tool or coloring supply I'm using, I'm going to my pastel. <laughs> I'm going to my color chart book. And as you see, I have my Carbothello pastels here. I have, what other pastels do I have in here? I have everything in here. All the pastels I own, except for a lot of the sticks. I need to, you know, do them in a color, in a color chart. But I know you're like, wait a minute, pastel sticks and pencils. Well, not the pencils, but the pastel sticks are not labeled. Well, most of them are actually the Prismacolor, the Koinor. A lot of those have like numbers on them. So, and even if they didn't have numbers on there, you can still, you know, just, you know, put them in a book so you can have an idea of what's in that set. That's what I would recommend. Swatch, 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 swatch. Or if you're comfortable with just having an extra sheet of paper and just testing it on that paper, that's fine too. But I find that wasteful. I want every, I want to keep and use every crumb of my coloring supply. <laughs> that's absolutely crazy, guys, isn't it? That's just insane. The next thing that's amazing, amazing, amazing to use with your pastels are stencils. This is a this is life right here, guys. This is my first stencil. Let's see if you can see this. Let me find something. Can you see it on there? Yeah. This is my first stencil of a cloud. So I cut it out and I made a cloud stencil to have in, you know, to use with my coloring books. So you can have either your homemade stencils or you can purchase some stencils. Like these stencils here are from the Dollar Tree. Of course you saw those you can use those with your pastels then you have these stencils that I found at Hobby Lobby you can use those in your coloring and of course you have the um, what are these the shape stencils and you, can, you can use these if you have the circle I have the circle stencil somewhere but you can use those for bubbles and different things like that and then you have like, this is so beautiful here, like some name, not names, like some writing. It's, you know, the like a writing, not word. You know, you see this, guys. I can't, my brain is not functioning right now. Um, what do you call this? Oh my goodness. Or you can use this stencil. You put it down and make it as a background of all of the lettering and words. It'll be so beautiful on like a vintage coloring or something, you know. And I got all these stencils here from, I think, eBay or something like that. But isn't that just beautiful? Let's see if you can even see it. I hope you can see it. And they have, they sent me two of the same ones with this, like the bricks. Then you have these stars. I need to use these so much. I need to use these so, I use, I need to use these way more often than I do. So that's why you see it, you see it. I have to crash my stash this year, guys. Then you have like your, alphabet and number stencils in case you want to put like a pastel type um you know word or something like this on your coloring page so you have those okay guys all right last but not least i have shown you all of this stuff to 
you know, tools to use with your stencil, not with your stencils. I have shown you all these items and tools to use with your pastels. Now we need to focus on the most, the most important part, and that's fixative. I see a lot of people putting like the wax paper between their pages when they're done, when they use like pastels, but I'm not the wax paper type of girl because I'm like, I, uh, I just don't want the wax paper like all through my book. You know, I want to just be able to open my book and just enjoy it and not have to put wax paper in and out, in and out and all that stuff. That's an extra step that I can use for something that that's an extra step of energy that I can use for something else, <laughs> but it's okay for those who do it. You know, hey, I feel you, whatever works. If it's not fixed, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so I use 98% of the time to fix my pastel work. I use this Purity Perfect Unscented Hairspray, and it says fixative, guys. I bought this three years ago, three years ago, and it's still full because you only have to just swipe a little bit on the page, and that's it. And it's the unscented one, and it's maximum hold, and it's awesome. It's at the Dollar Tree, only a dollar, and it's amazing. Now this, I got quite a bit of time back. This is the Matte Finish Krylon Fixative, and I don't use this at all. I've maybe used it once or twice a couple of years ago, but you have to use this outside. It tells you to use it in a well-ventilated area, but it needs to be more than a well-ventilated area. It's just, it's too strong. It's just, oh, it's horrible. But the hairspray is perfect. I use it in my house. It doesn't bother my allergies or my sinuses like this does because it's so harsh and it even says danger on the bottom. But, well, this one says caution too. <laughs> you don't blow yourself up now. Anyway, so these are my top, picks and my top tools for using pastels so if you find this one at the dollar tree i haven't seen it in the black can but if it says unscented hairspray fixative maximum hole that's the one by perfect purity so that's it guys that is all the tools you need to make beautiful pastel backgrounds or pastel work so if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a big old thumbs up. If you enjoy adult coloring, period, please give this video a thumbs up. I would appreciate if you would like, 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 like. And also, guys, subscribe to the channel if you can and if you will. I'd appreciate it. If you don't have an account, don't worry about it. Just keep watching my videos <laughs> and hitting the like button. <laughs> And guys, don't forget to ring that bell because I want you guys to be notified every time a new video comes out from me. All right, guys, don't forget to check that playlist out that is going to be at the end of this video. And I would like for you to do what? Have a wonderful rest of the day and happy coloring. Bye.